Welcome to the city of Greensboro, North Carolina, where as you can see, I am standing downtown on a glorious spring day. You know, the Lord is just so good. I can remember 10 years ago when the Lord had called me to come to Greensboro. And in my journey here, I can truly say I have been blessed and been around a blessed people and a blessed church. The St. James Baptist Church is located 536 West Florida Street. And we are a blessed people and would love to have you to come worship with us, particularly now, this is COVID season, but it is post COVID. As we are returning back to church, you are welcome to come join us on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. Please take the opportunity to call in, let us know that you're coming so we can put your name on the list. And then the protocol from there would be to check you in once you get there. And I would be glad to see you so we could worship together. Again, God bless you. Continue to be blessed. Pray for us. But most of all, join us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Great Hallelujah. is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the Hallelujah. house of the Lord. For thy feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Let's just bless God on this lovely Thank you, Lord. day. First Sunday, amen, in the month of September. Gracious God, our Father, we are a blessed people, we are a grateful people, and we are a kind people. We thank you, O Lord, for how you have been gracious to us. You have blessed us and brought us thus far along the way. We thank you, Heavenly Father, as we have made our way to the house of God. We ask, O God, that as your people have come, God, that you would reveal yourself to us on today. We can't do anything until you first show up. So God, we ask that you would just do that. Show up in our lives, in the word, in our prayers, in our worship, in the singing. We ask, oh God, that you would have thy own way in this place and all glory belong to thine. In Jesus' name we pray and the people of God say amen. 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 Come on, let us stand and worship God as our choir come at this time. Here's my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no can worship you for me for all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me so here it is here's my worship all of my worship yeah. here is my worship all of my worship my very best receive my worship all of my worship Hallelujah. here is my worship all of my worship Help me out. 
Such a worthy God, such a worthy God, and no, and no one, one can worship you. For you can do a lot for me, but you can't do my worship. Only I can do my worship for all, for all the, the things, things you've done all the many things, me. God, that you've done for me. I'm so appreciative, Lord. No and no one, one no one knows my journey for but you and me, Lord. Me. So here it is. Here's my worship. No one, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you. Let's lift it up. Let's say it like we mean it. Worship. Everybody. All of my worship. We all have something to be thankful for. My worship. Hallelujah. All of my May not have everything we want, but we got everything we need. I'm not going to be silent, Lord. Long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Come on, help me out. morning to give God all of our worship, not some of it, not a little of it, not a fraction of it, 
that we've come to give him all of our worship this morning. Amen. Thank you, choir, for reminding us of why we are here, and that is to just give God glory and praise for all he has done. He has done wonderful things for us. He has blessed us this week to have a wonderful and safe week, and so we praise God for that and all the evil around us. A thousand have failed by the wayside, 10,000 at our right hand, but the word says, no harm I shall come nigh thee. Come on, earthquakes, tornadoes, fires, floods. Amen. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, uh, we have already come. And so, therefore, we have every right to give God praise and glory. That's why we've come today, not for attention or to give attention to, but we've came to worship the one and only true and living God who has been, come on, let's bless him, who has been good to us. He's been kind. He has been merciful. Amen. And we praise God for what he has done and what he is currently doing in the midst of our lives, collectively and as well individual. I praise God for what he's doing in other people's life. But I'm also, hallelujah, happy for what he's doing for Jerome Lee Jr. Come on, talk to me. Unworthy as I am, he is merciful to me, and I love him just for that. And we praise God for him on this morning. Why don't you just look at somebody and just wave at them, amen, just let them know, acknowledge them. Amen, we are God's people, and definitely we always Hallelujah. want to acknowledge Hallelujah. our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you want, you can turn to the camera and wave at those who might be watching the Thank broadcast. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay. And we pray that you are at home in a spirit of worship uh, on this morning. And so this hour has been consecrated, has been set aside. Amen. Um, I've learned uh, in the, during this pandemic, it's not just about watching, it's about worshiping. Amen. That's what it's about. Everything else on the sides, you can shun it to the side. It can take place after the worship service. But we are in worship right about now. And we have given ourselves to God uh, for that purpose this morning, and that is to worship him. We praise God for the great things he has done. Just want to mention one or two things. Um, uh, some of you may know um, we lost one of our one of our good, faithful members, a man, Sister Jackie uh, Bates, has gone home. Uh, to be with her Lord. Amen. And so we will celebrate her on Thursday um, at uh, viewing at 12 and um, the actual service will start at 12.30. And for those who may cannot come or um, who desire not to come rather but just you can watch it, it will be streamed. Amen. Um, you can go to our YouTube, our YouTube channel um, and uh, pull it up and watch it live um, at 12 o'clock, at 12, beginning probably either, probably 12 or either 12.30. I do know it will be streamed, amen. And so therefore, we want you to uh, be able to watch it. Pray for that family. Um, if you're not sure how to get on the site, you can just call the church and we definitely, we have that information for you. Um, and so we want to keep uh, the Bates family in prayer, um, truly. Um, as, uh, again, as their family uh, make plans, amen, uh, to uh, eulogize, um, and we would, uh, older folks say, put away, amen, their mother. And we want to pray for that family. Keep Sister Janice Poole in prayer as well, um, as they celebrated yesterday the home uh, going of her son on yesterday. So I want to keep that family uh, in prayer. And some of you already know, you know what happened in Winston-Salem at the high school. And so we want to uh, keep that family, both families in prayer. Amen. Um, perpetrator and victim. They both, they both lost sons. One, has, one, is, one is dead and the other will be lost. They lost him to the system. Amen. And so we want to keep those families uh, in prayers. And so much going on in our world that deserves the prayers of the righteous. And we pray that you would uh, do uh, that. We will resume Bible study on Tuesday. Amen. Aren't you excited? Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. 
we will resume Bible study at 12 o'clock on Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. and Wednesday at 12 noon. Um, we, will, um, we will continue in the book of Acts uh, where we left off. And uh, I want to get us through Acts because I think um, Acts is very, very relevant, um, um, particularly during this, this season of life for us, this season of the church, this post uh, pandemic this post quarantine time which we live um, we want to keep in mind we want to keep in focus um, the, the purpose of the church and not just it's necessary a a um, a building but the purpose of and the birth and purpose and mission of us God's people amen and so uh, it's so much going on and I, I, I'm, I'm fearful and I have seen and I still see that some have lost focus uh, yeah. during the pandemic because the pandemic has been so consuming, yeah. amen, yeah. Um, that the devil has um, sighted us and have taken our eyes off the mission of the church. God's church ain't going nowhere until he says so, amen, yeah. amen. So a uh, pandemic or no pandemic, uh, uh, God is doing something in our midst, and so we want to uh, ask that you would please uh, attend Bible study. Um, it will be as well virtual. Um, you can watch it. Uh, it will be, in fact, on Facebook Live. It will be on my Facebook Live page. And so if you are not on Facebook, um, you can open a Facebook account and, and uh, hopefully keep up with us. And you can also go to the church website and pull down the lesson. Each lesson uh, will be on the church website, so you can print it out and and follow us and keep up with it. And sometimes the spirit take over and we don't finish uh, one particular lesson that day. We have to finish the next week, but at least you'll have it. You can write on it and, and do what you will with it and, sh and share it most of all, amen, yeah. uh, with, with other people. And we praise God uh, uh, for that. Um, I think that was it for our announcements. I don't know if I uh, had anything else. Uh, I don't think. Uh, uh, but just, uh, again, um, just attend to those uh, if, you, uh, if you will. Um, next Sunday is Grandparents Day. I do know that. Amen. Next, uh, what that means, I don't know. But uh, you got grandkids. Amen. So uh, uh, next uh, Sunday is Grandparents Day. As we celebrate that. It's back to work, back to school, back to church. We celebrate that in September. Amen. Back to work, back to school, and for some, back to church. Amen. At this time, we have, uh, uh, Deacon Hobson Bryant will come. Amen. Has an announcement. We want him to come at this time. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Ah, that's better. That's better. And good morning to all of you who are sharing with us virtually. On October the 17th, October the 17th, we will celebrate the 10th pastoral anniversary of our beloved pastor, the angel of this house, our own current commentator on Calvary, the Reverend Dr. Jerome Lee Jr. And of course, our leading lady, Sister Cynthia J. Lee. So mark your calendars and make sure you place a line item in your budget for that month, all right? And believe it or not, it's hard to believe it's really been 10 years. It's really been 10 years. Now, now, each pastoral anniversary is significant. And each one is unique. But there's something about the number 10. You see, when someone has physical qualities, a guy has physical qualities, or a lady has physical qualities, we label that person as a 10. When you, when you go to the doctor or you go to the emergency room, one of their vital signs is, do you have any pain? And they'll ask you on a scale of one to 10, where would you put your pain? And most of us, if it's significant, will say, it's a 10. Well, it doesn't stop there. Even in scripture, the number 10 has significance. And, and 10, a, a tenth 
is your tithe. It's, it's a 10% of what's given. Believe it or not, God brought about 10 plagues on Egypt. Jesus healed 10 lepers and he gave us 10 commandments. Brothers and sisters, 10 years ago, God fulfilled his promise in Jeremiah 3, 15. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. It's only fitting that on October 17th that we celebrate the angel of this house, that we celebrate the God called, God placed pastor of this church, that we celebrate God's gift to St. James Baptist Church in the person of Pastor Jerome Lee Jr. So I encourage you, put it on your calendar, put it on your phone, talk to your, 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 your friend and remind them that on October 17th, it's time to celebrate. Amen. Thank you, Hobson. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Wonderful. For the God be the glory for the great things he has done and continue to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Wow. <laughs> amen. Um, I don't know what to say. That's, uh, amen. That's the sermon for today. <laughs> ten plagues. Uh, amen. And did you say I was a ten? <laughs> I was just joking. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Sister Lee is a 10, though. Amen. She's she my 10. Amen. She's a 10 to me. She was, she was a 10 when I first saw her, Hobson. And still a 10. Amen. Who's that lady? Who's that lady? Amen. To God, be, to God be the glory for the great and wonderful things uh, he has done and pray that he will continue to do it. Eyes haven't seen, neither ear heard, and neither has entered the hearts of any man yet the things uh, God has in store for us as a, as a family, as a church, as a team. Amen. 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 Um, let us prepare as we uh, prepare to give uh, to our God. He's been good to us, and he has truly blessed us uh, in many ways imaginable. Uh, um, we're just so grateful and we always are excited to give back to the God who has already given us. Um, it's offering time. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Um, Paul told the Corinthian church on the first day of the week to lay aside their monies, uh, which was the first day of the week was on Sunday. So when he come, that the that the church would have already done that so that Paul can continue in preaching the word of God. Um, that, still, that still carries on today in, in, this, in this century, 21st century. Uh, it, is, it is the offering, it is the tithe uh, that takes care of God's house, amen. And so we would do right by him uh, to give back to him. And I always say that we can't give to God, we can only give back. Um, he has already given. He has entrusted us to give back. And so as we do that today, um, prepare our tithe. Um, I want to thank those persons who already have mailed or have already used Givelify or who have already maybe even brought this during the week. We praise God for the obedience of those. If today, if you have not done either of those three and you would like to do so today, um, there are envelopes in front of you and you can use those envelopes and you could uh, fill, those, fill them out, your tithe, missions, wherever you want it to go, and it will be earmarked just for that. Hold on to that envelope, and at the end of the service, on your way out, uh, after we do communion and after the benediction, uh, there will be baskets uh, in the uh, vestibule, and you can just drop them right on uh, in there. Amen. Let, a, let us pray over, um, over what God has done. 
Gracious God, our Father, a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for the income. Thank you for, if it was retirement, if it was wages paid, what we earned on our jobs, if it was Social Security, or oh Lord God, what streams it may have come, Lord God, we, we give it back to you. It is you who has supplied seed to the sower. And so, God, thank you for entrusting us with the seed. And, Lord God, we are sowing it right back in the kingdom of God. May it never be missed, but may it be multiplied as you have need of it to build your kingdom on this earth until your return. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, it's National Back to Church Sunday. And so I'm going to need your help as we go back a little bit, can I? Come on, clap your hands. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. This morning when I rose, yeah. I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I got out of my bed, I didn't have no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen. Let us stand to our feet and just give God just a little bit of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Amen. If joy is yours, amen, you ought to celebrate him. If victory is yours, you ought to celebrate him. We are overcomers uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are overcomers. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we bless you for this privilege and time as we prepare for your word. We ask, oh God, you would prepare the soil. Prepare us to receive your word. And may the word of God have an influence in our life. Deliver us if we need to be delivered. God, whatever we need to challenge us, if we have to be challenged. But we ask, oh God, do, oh God, what only you can do. Let your word sanctify us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to um, Luke chapter 12. Uh, Luke um, chapter 12. Luke chapter um, 12. Luke chapter 12. If you have it, say, uh, say amen. amen. Eva, if you can turn my monitors down just a tad bit. I'm getting that ping. Amen. 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 Perfect. Amen. Thank you. Luke chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 16. And this is, will be the conclusion to the sermon series um, the Lord has put in my heart to do. Um, uh, and the, that is the game of life, um, the four sermons. And so I hope that you get them. I hope that you would give them to somebody. If nothing else, somebody need to hear them. Um, but this is the last installment. Um, so Luke 12. And beginning at verse number 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This, is very, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This, how, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. And you may be seated. I want to look at verse number 19. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. I want to uh, conclude our series today with the subject for just one word. Look at somebody and tell them, life. Tell them on the other side just in case they thought you were ignoring them. Life. My brothers and sisters, there was a movie by Tyler Perry that some years ago where he played the role of a lawyer and uh, he, uh, his uh, wife, he and his wife had a daughter and the wife somehow uh, became addicted to uh, crack cocaine and her life began to, as we know it would, began to spiral down. Life was messed up after that and so much so that her addiction, her habit, her addiction caused a fraction of in the family and caused so much stress in the family that, uh, that they began, they divorced and they had a daughter 
and it just caused and reaped so much havoc in that family. Her life was spent chasing a dream, as we would say, trying to get that monkey off her back. Her life went down, um, their daughter uh, life began to change with the effect being on the husband played by Tyler Perry, so much so that it began to affect the family. And believe it or not, if you don't already know, bad habits don't just affect the person with the habit. That's right. That's right. It affects the family. And therefore, uh, it was a conversation that had taken place when uh, the husband, Tyler Perry, had gone to work and the daughter, uh, was in the kitchen with his mother, which is her grandmama, was in the kitchen as grandma was fixing food. Her and the daughter were talking, and the little girl inquired about why her mother's life was messed up. Why, why, why is she doing, Granny, what she is doing? Don't she see? Don't she see what she's doing? And don't she see how it's hurting the family and how it's hurting us? And her and my dad is not together. Don't she understand? And then uh, she asked Grandmama for and a reasonable answer. You know, people are inquisitive, and particularly children who we think don't know and don't see what's going on. Grandmama said something. I just really she just summed it up in a nutshell. She did not she did not waver. She did not give a long gesture. She did not give a whole sentence or paragraph or something deafening. She just simply looked at her daughter and she said, baby, life. Come on, talk to me. Life. That, that's the only thing I can tell you that is wrong with your mother. Life. And my brothers and sisters, that is, I think, the, uh, one of the most significant answers uh, she could have given that particular uh, uh, young lady because I thought about life as it was. There are many people that you and I know uh, that life got a hold of them. You know them, I know them. Some of them have, were athletes in school. They were track stars. They were class A football players and, and basketball players. They were, um, they were in band with us, amen. They were, they were somebody. They had high GPAs. They were smart. And somewhere along the line here, somewhere along the line, uh, and as life would have it, they went out, they got hooked up with the wrong things, the wrong people. Things just happened to them somewhere along the line. Church, life got to them. And my brothers and sisters, which of us sitting in here today will try me not to believe that life has somewhat almost succumbed some of us? That, that, that's what happened to uh, many people. Life, 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 life. It's just, it's just, there's no excuse. It's just no justification for it. It's just that life has taken place. And therefore, life has dictated to them a bad hand. Life has dictated to them how they're going to bounce back, how they're going to come back. Life has dictated to them, what do I do from here? I don't know what to do. Things has happened to me. I don't know how to handle life. Some do handle life well, but there are others who don't handle life too well. There are others who don't handle hurt too well. There are some who don't handle rejection too good. There are some who don't handle love too well. Come on. There are some who don't handle being treated mean. There are some who don't handle jealousy too well. There are some who don't handle wealth too well. Life has gotten to them. But my brothers and sisters, God, who has created us from the dust of the earth, has breathed into us life. And because he breathed into us life, he breathed life into us, and we became living souls. God has become, since that day, God has become the sustainer of life for us. He is the sustainer of life. It is He gives life. In fact, I'll, I'll be reading it come Thursday. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He gives life. God is life. Life circles around him. He has control of life. He himself is the author and finisher of life. He is life. 
And because he has created us and breathed into us and we became living people, living souls, we are somebody in him. My brothers and sisters, I can recall even Jesus talking about life. Uh, life is just something Jesus knew about life. He says, I call, uh, the word says in Deuteronomy, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Yes, and then Jesus in the New Testament comes along and reminds his disciples as often he did. Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, uh, what you will eat or, or, um, what, uh, or about your body, what you will wear. For he says, for life is more than uh, more. Life is more than uh, for the food, for the body and more than clothes. Jesus talks about life and letting his disciples know uh, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life. He wanted them to understand life was something uh, that, we, that would be uh, 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 futile to deal with. He said, then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed because he says life does not consist in the abundance of things or the abundance of possessions. My brothers and sisters, tell that to the man in our text. Tell that to this rich man. This man, the Bible declares, was rich. He was materially rich. He was a wealthy man. The land he had, money was not his problem. This man, this early story Jesus told had some, uh, it was a spiritual significance, but it had some conviction to it. It was an earthly story. It was a parable that Jesus was telling and while he was teaching his disciples. He told them, uh, he told his disciples there was, a, uh, there was a man who came to him and said, Jesus, I need you to tell my brother. Amen. Uh, to give me what so rightfully uh, belong to me. He, he bothered Jesus, Hobson, with this. Jesus is teaching. Isn't that something? Jesus is teaching and talking about the kingdom of God and, and, and talking about the order of the kingdom and what it means to be a part of the kingdom. He's talking about God's business and uh, spiritual business and kingdom business. And then he is bothered by somebody, a man, who come to him with a little, uh, with some uh, insignificant uh, earthly problem. Amen. Jesus is talking about what is significant. This brother comes along talking about what's insignificant, but, but what was significant to him. He wanted Jesus to talk with his brother and tell his brother as if Jesus come, amen, uh, to tell us to tell our brothers and sisters what to do. Amen. He didn't come for that. He came to exalt the kingdom. It's something how we can, uh, it's something how we can challenge Jesus uh, with stuff that only matter to us. Amen. Uh, <laughs> it's something how we can try to deter Jesus. It's a trick of the devil to deter, amen, Jesus' mind from the kingdom and focus Jesus' mind on he and his brother's family mess. Amen. And Jesus said, well, let me, let me kind of explain something to you. He said, that, let me tell you a story. There was a rich man who, uh, who had planted and uh, his crops had yielded so much that year. His crops, amen, had yielded a lot and because it had yielded so much, he didn't know how or what he was going to do with it. In fact, the man said, you know what? I have yielded so much. My crops are so big, so large. Um, I've never even had a harvest like this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down my barns, my storage barns. I'm going to tear them down, and I am going to build bigger ones to hold all of my possessions. All of my, all of my stuff, which is what gets us in trouble. All of my stuff.
stuff. I'm going to build me bigger bonds. I'm going to tear down these little ones because I hit the jackpot. I hit the, I hit the daily double. I, I, I've hit it big. I've, I've got so much, never had this much, may not ever have this much again, so I know what I'll do. Tear down my bonds, and when I build me some bigger ones to store all of this stuff, to store all of my grain, I am going to lock my hands behind my head. And I am going to eat and drink and be merry. In other words, I'm going to enjoy life. I am going to enjoy life. I mean, why shouldn't I? I have the means. I have what others don't have. I got the money. And with the money, I'm sure I can get the honeys. So I'm sure that won't be no problem. If I was a one with the money, Hobson, I can go get some cosmetic surgery, some lift, some tuck, some removal, some addition. And then I will become a 10. I can get me some gym membership now. I can work my biceps. I can work my petrolis majors, amen. I, 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 can, I can work out and build up and, uh, and, and, uh, and take a couple of protein powder and some steroid shots. And Amen. I can fit my clothes out like I would like to. I can, I, I can look like a champ. I can make myself a 10 because I have now the means. I can I can I can, I can, I can, I can eat. I'll be able to just drink now. And I will just be merry. I will take life easy. Then there was the voice of an angel. Who reminded him. The angel appeared to him and called this rich man a fool. He said, you are a fool. He says, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, he says, this day, not tomorrow. You don't have next week to get it right. You don't have tomorrow to get it right. This day, you got today, honey, to get it right. Because on this day, your soul is required of thee. And the Lord, we know what happened from there. Don't tell them, but we know what happened. If the Lord said his soul was required, I'm sure the death angel has a job to do. And so, therefore, that was the end of the story. And Jesus said, well, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves. But is not rich toward God. Yeah, in other words, this is church. Uh, th this, th this, is, this is life. This is what life seemed to consist of. This is what life seemed to appear to be around us because you've heard it and I've heard it all of my life. Amen. All I ever heard and all I've ever known was uh, if you get the money, work and get the money. And if you could have and if you could buy and if you can get, if you could go, then you are somebody. That's what you've been told. That's what I have been told. We've been told uh, that money healeth all things. We've been told, amen, the, as the words of even 50 Cent have said, get rich or die trying. We all, hey man, know what it's like. We've been told to go after the money. Women chase men who got money. Men go to jobs who pay more money. Children are always asking for money. Everybody want money. Money, money, money. Get the money and life will be fine. Well, I come hopefully to bust your bubble, but I also come to hope to, to restore you. That life is not just about getting money. Life is just not about getting on the top. Life is not just Jesus just told us. Life is more than meat and drink. There is more to life. There is a spiritual side to life. That we've got to learn to become rich in. There's another side to life that money can't buy. There's another side of life that, first of all, money can't help emotions to get us through life. There's another side of life that we're going to have to grow up and teach our children first how to handle life. There's another side of life that money don't teach you how to handle life. And it doesn't teach me how to handle life. 
this text is going to help us today. This brother going through life with, and we are not mad at him for what he has. We ain't jealous, at least I'm not jealous of what the man has. What he has belonged to him. It is his. But let's look at how he wasted himself. Let's look at what God is really trying to tell us. One of the things we cannot forget, first of all, that is not, it's nothing wrong with having. It's nothing wrong with having the man worked hard, he planted, and he reaped. It's nothing wrong with that. So this is not about bashing, amen, people who have it. It's not about bashing people who, this man, he, he, he did just like you and I. He worked hard. He worked hard. He worked hard. He, and he didn't bust nobody in the head and rob anybody. He didn't kill anybody. The man, like you and I, brothers and sisters, the man worked hard. He plowed the field. If you know anything about farming, amen, I, I passed it in the rule for 12 years. Amen. I learned a whole lot about farming. I've never been a farmer, but I learned a whole lot about farming. And let me tell you something. Farming is some hard work. Amen. It's hard work. And so, and so he, he, he worked in his field and, uh, and he worked hard for what he had. Uh, he took the time to go buy the fertilizers and to go buy the seed, go buy oil or gas for his combine or for his tractor or in this day his mule. Amen. Uh, he worked hard. His oxen, he plowed the field and he turned over the dirt. He laid the burrows and the rows. He did everything. He went and bought an arm and to know when to plant, amen, and what to plant, and what season to plant it in. He did all he could do. He did all of his homework. He did everything right according to the farmer's almanac. The man did what was right. He talked to the other farmers. He talked to the older farmers. He talked to the wiser farmers. He knew what to do, how to do it, when to do it, what to do it with. So we're not mad at the fact that the man did what was right and yielded up a crop it's obvious that he done something right here do i have a witness he done something right and the man reaped a wonderful harvest and sometimes we hate on people who do the right thing and earn what they earn sometimes we beat them down some kind of bad do i have a witness and one thing we have to remember is that we cannot beat up people who earn a honest living Come on, that's life for us. Because sometimes we make people who work hard, sometimes we make them feel bad. I, I mean, don't get mad because they went and got an education so that they can have a wonderful life and raise a blessed family and have. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get mad because there are some who had the same opportunity that they had, but we wasted our lives. We hung with the boys. We got high. Do I have a witness in here? We chased whoever that was moving hello somebody we did what we did and then they prospered they did good but then we look at them down our broad noses and our thick african-american lips as if they shouldn't have what they have don't be mad at people who plan their life amen so that they could have something in life that is where the trouble comes at that is where the division comes in i've seen families who get mad at others in the family because they done went off and got some education and got a degree or two or three, amen, in my case. They went and got a degree, but then the other half did nothing with their life, just sat around and hung on the corner with the homies and the boys and did nothing with their life and did crazy stuff with their life. But then all of a sudden, they get mad at the halves because they have not. You don't get mad at people who plan their life and trusted God to get them where they are. You can't get mad with people who plan their work, work their plan and gave it to God and God blessed their plan and blessed their work and blessed their house. You can't get mad at somebody like that. You got to get mad at yourself. Come on, talk to me now. We family. I have seen family. Look at them. They think they cool. They think they something because they done went and got themselves a degree. Well, what you doing? Well, I just stay home and just uh and just uh did nothing. Well, uh nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You did what you wanted to do. Don't hate me because I took the time 
to fill out a college application, took the time to beg for money to go to college because I didn't have it. I knew I didn't have it in the first place. I knew the parents, my parents didn't have it. Don't get mad with me because, amen, I still owe from, from uh, grants and other monies that took me to go to school. Hello, somebody. Don't get mad with me because I got a financial aid bill. Help me. You want to get mad? Help me pay that. Don't get mad because my parents taught me and told me that you can't go through life like that. You got to do for yourself, son. You're going to be a... I'll tell you what my daddy told me one time. I will never forget it. My daddy, and I won't use the language that he used, but I will tell you what he said somewhat in a nutshell. My daddy told me, he said, let me tell you something, Jerome. He said, ain't nobody going to take care of no grown man. He said, but somebody will take care of a grown woman. But ain't nobody going to take care of no grown man. You know what he was telling me? You better grow up and be responsible. Because ain't nobody going to take care of no grown man. I, and again, I, I told you I'm trying to leave out some uh, uh, appropriate profanations that he said with it. Nobody going to take care of no grown man. In other words, he was telling me that a man will take care of a woman. But ain't no woman or no woman really should rather be taking care, hello, of no grown man. In other words, boy, you better go out. You better, you better do for yourself. Because if you don't, you can have a messed up life. Come on, talk to me. How many times have we talked to our sons about stuff like that? If we haven't, we surely need to sit them down and tell them. So we can't get mad with the man. See, we can't get mad with the man. The man worked. And he worked hard for the money. Tilled his ground. Did what was right. Did everything according to. And he got blessed. God smiled down on him. Yeah, I know in the community, you know and I know, he had some haters. The text don't tell us, but we therefore we sure can suggest. Because you don't get blessed without attracting haters. Amen. And so therefore, again, there's nothing wrong with what he's done. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't play no number. He didn't take a church bus trip to Atlantic City. didn't play basement bingo in the church. Y'all know y'all. I mean, boy, we got some mess with us. We talk about folk out in the world. Y'all know, goodness where church folk take trips to Atlantic City. And they ain't going for the shows. They going to get rich. Take their tithing money anyway. So, the man, I ain't mad at the brother. I ain't mad at another brother. The brother worked hard. I seen the man going to work. I, I watched him in his field. I on my way down uh, to the church for Bible study, and I'm watching him on his John Deere tractor plowing. Hey, Pastor, it's Bible study time. Yeah, you coming? No, I got to get this field right. True story. <laughs> I, I, I remember when, uh, my, my, my first context. It was funny, Hops, in my interview, you know. You want to say the right thing. <laughs> you want to say the right thing. But for future reference, make sure you ask the right questions, too. So one of the, one of the, brothers, the brothers on the committee said, if you get this church, are you going are you going to teach bible study in my mind i'm saying to myself in my mind i was dumb why would you ask the pastor if he's going to teach bible study i'm trying to get to church you think i'm going to say no but, but you know they, you know they think they're smarter than you, you know. 
But this is the funny part. After years of service, I found out, Sister Barbara, what I should have been asking is if I teach it, are you coming? Because I'm there every Wednesday. You ain't. I saw you on your tractor farming that field when I went on my way to the church with the lesson up under my armpits. Look at somebody tell them, people. That's what life, life is. That's what life is. Hobson, you got to deal with people. And you got to deal with them where they are. Come on. You, 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 gotta, you got to, that, that's what I love about Jesus. Jesus dealt with folk where they are. Some know it all. Some don't know nothing. Some know everything. Some think they know. And they will challenge you. So yeah, you got to meet people where they are. So we, we, again, we're not mad at the brother. He worked hard. He worked hard. She worked hard. Can't be mad at him. Secondly, here is the thing though. Here is the thing. This is, what, this, is what, this is what life takes us to another world. And this is what we all can identify here. So, so don't drop heads on this one here. Uh, again, we can't be mad at him. Life was good to him. He, he, he reaped a wonderful harvest. So much he had to tear his barns down and build some big storehouses for it. That's no problem. But here is the thing. Here is the thing that, uh, that, we, can, that we can attest to. This is what happened to this band, to this brother. This is what he did. Secondly, we cannot forget the law of reciprocity. This brother forgot the law of reciprocity. Let me help us with that. He forgot that everything God created reciprocates and, and, and goes right back to God. Let, let me help us again. Um, everything that God created, he created to produce after its own kind. Am I right? I mean, you're talking seeds, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 since, since, since God is the origin of it all, everything that God made automatically gives back to him. It reciprocates. It gives back to him. It's, it's, it's law. Let me, let, me help, let, me, let me help you. Let me help us. Let me help us. Um, um, uh, human seed. We, we're adults. So this, okay, this is a little class real quick. This, um, uh, uh, we are adults. When a man deposits a seed in the woman. She incubates the seed, and eventually, in time, supposedly nine months, but in time, it gives back to them another human being. Amen. Am I right so far? Um, with this case, you don't get it. Well, it's the same in the animal world. Two deers, two dogs, two ducks, uh, the fowl of the air. It's, it's the same thing. That that that. that that those birds mate, the bird, the, the, the female, she, she, she lays an egg, and the egg gives back to them another bird. Okay, all right. Um, uh, the same with, 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 the, with the clouds in the air. They, they store water. They store water. And, and uh, at the right time, that water comes out of that cloud. That water then hits the ground. But then the sun comes up and the sun sends it right back up in the cloud as a vapor. Okay, well, all right, all right. Um, um, God gives us seed as he gave this farmer. Um, when, when you plant a corn seed or whatever kind of seed, apple tree any kind of any kind of fruit tree any kind of grain when you plant when you plant seeds in the ground what the ground does is incubate that seed but then after a while 
Oh, that ground gives back to the planter something to eat. It is the law of reciprocity. You can't, you can't get around the law of reciprocity. It's life. Amen. You just can't get away from it. You just can't get around it. It is life. It is what God has done. It is how God has created the world to be. Everything begats after its own kind. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's why, that's why, uh, that's why you just can't have uh, two of the same thing because uh, identical thing because they cannot produce. It is no law of reciprocity there. Some of you will pull that down tomorrow. Amen. You, there is no law of reciprocity there. If I can say this, then I hope I can get away with it. I hope it's fine. I know we're sensitive this day and time. But two men cannot produce, amen, another child. Do I have a witness in here? It's not the law of reciprocity. Two women, amen, cannot give birth to another child. It is not the law of reciprocity. It is no way, no how. It cannot give back. And since the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they who live in it, we have to remember, we have to learn to give back to God. Let me help us. We got to learn the law of reciprocity. We got to learn it and teach it to our kids because we got to learn how to give back to God. Do you have a witness? When we get paid, we get income, we get checks. God says he want his tithe. That is reciprocal. Do I have a witness? He gave. Now he's waiting for us to give back. He is simply waiting for us to give back. When he blesses us with children, what does he expect? Israel told us and showed us, old slaves showed us. When we give birth to children, what does he expect? He expects us to give our children back to God. Do I have a witness in here? When you get that new beautiful home, amen, when you're no longer living in a one bedroom with one bathroom, amen, when now when you live in a uh, ghetto fabulous now, when you done move from a dead end street to a cul-de-sac, hello, when you're living in a house twice as big than the one that you grew up in and you got more bathrooms now and windows, amen, now that you can throw stuff out the window. Do I have a witness in here? When you get that new house, you've got to gut you got to give it back to God. When you get that new job that you've been praying for, asking God for, and really wanting your heart. When you get that job, you got to take that job and do what? Give that job back to God. And then not only that, you got to give yourself back to God. Do I have a handful of witness in here? It is the law of reciprocity. Everything God created, he wants it back. And he's going to ask for it back someday. But we got to willingly say, God, I give unto you. You made a way. You have blessed me. And life has been good to me. And Lord, here I am reciprocating and thanking you for what you have done for me. Let me, let me move on for time's sake. So therefore, we got to give back. It's the law. It is the law of reciprocity. Everything God creates, everything he did, he wants it back and expects us to give it back. He is not FICA. He is not the IRS. He ain't going to just take it out from you, amen. He wants you to willingly give. He wants you to willingly give it to him because he so willingly gave it to us. He gave us life and everything in life. He blessed us, and he simply wants it back. If he's blessed you, he wants your thanksgiving. Do I have a witness in here? He wants your hallelujahs. He wants, you, he wants your thank you, Jesus. He wants your hand wave. Church is no place to come and sit and be bougie. Church is no place to sit on a bump, uh, on light bumps on a log and be a part of the frozen chosen. That is not the will of God. Let everything that have breath, come on, praise the Lord. You've got to be grateful and thankful. It is the, look at somebody tell them, it is the law. And if you don't want to give God praise, if you don't want to give him your tithe, you don't want to bless your house, you don't want to bless your family, guess what? Then you are defying the law. And consequences come when you defy the law. Let me close. So then he says life. The brother, he did well. But he forgot the law oppressed up a reciprocity and because he forgot the law of reciprocity he therefore now began because now he has so much he began now to turn uh, his blessings instead of instead of celebrating his blessings outwardly 
he now turns his blessings inwardly. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Look at that. He said, I'll just, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Well, if you asked Jerome Lee, I could have I told him, but he didn't ask me. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do with all this stuff? He questioned himself as if that was a hard question to answer. I'm sure Jesus said that the poor you'll have with you all. I'm sure it was some poor people around the corner from him. I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss uh, I'm going old, old school names. I'm sure Miss Beulah May and Lizzie Ann across the street, amen, could have used a little something, something, something. I'm sure there were some kids in his community trying, Hobson, to go to school and go to college and didn't have no money. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he had some nieces and some nephews maybe he could have maybe done something nice for. But he turned everything on himself. And I was like, well, Lord, why would you do that? It was a rich man did the same thing. We know the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man, the rich man didn't give nobody nothing to give Lazarus nothing. And ain't that he, could, uh, ain't that he couldn't, he just didn't. And this brother fell in the same category. So much so. The angel called him a fool. Turned everything inward. And I said to myself, this is the same society and world in which we live in now. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we, we live in a selfish world. Ain't nobody trying to help nobody. Everybody is for themselves. It's every man for themselves. It's, it's, it's again, get rich or die trying. Don't worry about other people. Everybody's doing everything for themselves. I mean, I mean, they get blessed. I mean, I, 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 I mean, when some people, they get blessed, they close the lid, amen, on the owner. They don't want nobody to get none of it. And then they sprinkle poison on the rest, make sure, amen, that don't nobody get any of it. it it's, and he turned it inwardly. And I'm going to tell you, I, I've been pastor for 22 years. 22 years. And let me, let me show you what I have seen in 22 years of pastoring God's church. And I know the senior pastors have seen it way more than me if they've been pastoring twice as long as I have. And I know they have. Um, I'm 59. I started pastoring, but like 38, 39. So we're in that area. Hey Amen. I might do my math later. But it's 22 years, trust me. And, 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 and what I've seen uh, over time is that the Bible is fulfilling itself. Yes, amen, amen. And, let me, and let me show you what I mean. Um, uh, the milk of human kindness is drying up. It is. The milk of human kindness is, is, is just drying up now. Um, uh, uh, it, Timothy talks about how, Paul told Timothy how, how in the last days people will not endure sound doctrine and talks about you know, uh, how people will become lovers of themselves. And we live in a world of people now who are just lovers of themselves. Folk don't love people like talking about anymore. Folk are lovers of themselves. They get what they can get for themselves. They ain't thinking about you or your feelings. Me or mine. If they can get it. They will get it. For themselves. And one of the things I have noticed as well. To go along with that. Is I noticed their, uh, the roles have switched. Uh, Cynthia, I noticed that what we should be sensitive about. We have become insensitive about it. And what, we, and what we should be insensitive about, we have become sensitive to that. We have become so sensitive and insensitive, and we got them all mixed up. Insensitive. The world is so mean and crazy and wild, and so we have so become so insensitive because we're washed up in ourselves. As long as we get what we want when we want it and get it now, it's about ourselves. It's, 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 about, it's, about, it's about self now and getting what self can get. And we should, be, we should be sensitive to the poor. We should be sensitive to those who are being murdered just in high school and 15 years old. We should be sensitive with girls 13 
quarantine, dropping babies, amen, like nothing. We should be sensitive, amen, of COVID-19 and people dying from COVID. We should be sensitive for old to, uh, toward old people who don't have health insurance. We should be sensitive to these issues. But we become insensitive about them, but we become sensitive to stuff, amen, that don't make sense. We become sensitive to uh, crazy stuff, amen, that we shouldn't even be sensitive to, amen. Uh, and so therefore, we got to learn now how to deal with life this way. And this brother said he was, the Bible said he was a fool. And the angel told him, told him, nah, you know what? This night, your soul is, your soul is required of thee. God has come back for your soul tonight. And now, not only that, so uh, now what's going to happen to your stuff? The stuff you ain't want your grand, you ain't want your kids to get. The furniture, you ain't want them to sit on. The car, you didn't want them to bring that drink in. The dress, amen, that still has the tags. He did like we do. He made everything bigger. You know how we do. We buy bigger houses, make bigger closets, we get bigger car space. Uh, bigger clothes space, then we get a bigger, then we add bigger garage, we can put more cars in, and, and then and, and everything just becomes big. We just do everything big now. You know, we, we big people now, you know, and we're doing big. And the brother just added, and the angel took his life. Took me back to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes asked the question, why do we, why do we cover it over stuff? And I'm just fixing it up. Why do we cover stuff that uh that we work so hard for and uh Become possessive over stuff we work so hard for that when we die, that we leave it back to people, to our children, and we don't know how they're going to treat it. The brother just stored everything up, but then he died, and guess what? He died and left everything. Now who's going to get it? Everything he worked hard for, and he worked hard for it, is now gone. It's going to be left in the hands of those who are coming behind. And let me close with this. It's a terrible thing when you get stuck building your own empire. <clears throat> it's a terrible thing <clears throat> when you get stuck building your own empire. Because you need to know, as I close, that empires do crash down. Do have a bit, you, Wall Street, uh, Enron, empires do go down. The empires uh, fall. My spirit cringes with me every time I hear somebody say America is the richest nation in the world. We need to be careful saying that kind of stuff. Be careful beating our chest talking about how rich America is. She's the most powerful nation in the world. Baby, if life will teach you one thing. Life has taught me empires do fall. Do I have a witness in here? You don't believe me? You ask the Assyrians. The Assyrians' empire failed. You don't believe me? You ask the Babylonians. The Babylonian empire under Nebuchadnezzar, it failed. You don't believe me? You ask the Medes. Their empire failed. You don't believe me? You ask the Persians. Their empires failed. You don't believe me? You ask the Romans. Their empire failed. Kings, dictators, and rulers do fall off of their stool. They fall off of their empire. Egypt will fall. Egypt did fall off their empire. Do I have a witness in here? Because it fell by Alexander the Great who conquered a man Egypt. And Egypt ain't been right since. So empires do fall. But if you're going to build your kingdom in closing, you got to build your hope on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Y'all dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Do I have a witness in here? I'm going to build my life on Jesus. I don't want to just be rich with materials, but I'm rich in Jesus. I got joy, unspeakable joy. I got discernment that only God can give. I got love in my heart, whether somebody accept it or not. I know Jesus. He has given me spiritual richness. He's given me understanding of his word. He's given me wisdom for his kingdom. He's given me power by the Holy Ghost. He has baptized my soul. I'm rich in God. I may not have a lot of money, but I'm rich in God. I can move mountains with the faith that I have. 
I can lay hands on sick people and watch them recover and walk up in church and give God glory. I don't have money. I don't have silver. I don't have gold. Oh, but I got healing on the inside. I got it. Look at my tell them I got it. Come on, tell them I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Money can't buy it, but I got it. God gave it to me, and I got it. And I'm going to reciprocate and give it back to him for his glory. For his glory. For his glory. Say yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Let us stand. Yeah, I wear a nice suit. Yeah. I like nice shoes. I like to eat nice. Hallelujah. I have a nice house. But those are things. And if God took them away, the question is would be, who will I be then? God took all that you possess away from you, even your children, just like Job. Who will you be then? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Because the things that I have can't give me God. But if I lose them because I'm rich in him, the God I serve can give me more things. Yeah. That was Job's philosophy. That's why I don't get all tired of all old material stuff. I mean, you know, I've learned I'm too, getting too old for that stuff. We caught up in new clothes, new phone every week. New this, new that. I mean, that's fine. I like it. Give it to him. I probably wear it. But if I die, I'll probably end up being buried in it too. Life doesn't consist. In the abundance of things. He said life consists in having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he told him. That's what he said. He ended, I'm going to read this last verse and we'll do communion and we can go. He said, he said, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves. But here is the joy. But who is not rich toward God. You want to get rich? Get rich toward God. That's what's wrong with our children. I see stuff. I don't know if y'all I see stuff that y'all probably don't see. You know what I see? I see our children, right, this generation, they can't handle life. They can't handle life. They don't know how to handle, they can't handle, they can't handle life. They can't handle getting mad, they can't handle, they can't handle, I, let me tell you something, I don't even got time, but let me tell you something, if anybody ought to be, not be able to handle life, it's me. The things I had to endure, and as a Christian, and specifically, specifically as a preacher, and as a pastor, I mean, let me tell you something, I question if the church could probably handle half of the stuff I have to deal with and handle in life. Hallelujah. Not that I'm better. But I just understand life. I understand people. The fools and, and, and the ones that are not fools. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. But that understanding is based on the discerning spirit that God has given me to understand people. And when you understand people you become a little bit more sensitive to them. You become a little bit more, you become a little bit more concerned. Our young people can't handle life. My they don't God. know what to do. They, they, are, they, are, they are descendants of mamas that are young. They don't know what to do neither. We, most of us in here, I, I see the grade, most of us in here had, had parents. They, they, they taught us something in life. One thing they taught us is the word no ain't going to kill us. They taught us that. Praise God. Hello in here. 
They told us no way gonna kill us. They tell one of these young yos out here no. That's why young boys can't handle rejection when girls tell them no. See, we tell our girls no. We teach our girls to say no. But we don't teach our boys to handle when the girl do tell them no. That's right. That's right. What you mean no? You know who I am. What you mean yo? What you mean yo? What you mean tell me no? Then next thing you know, he going off. Because his mama, neither his daddy, taught him how to handle no. My God. No means no. no. The doors of the church. Maybe there's somebody who wants to accept Jesus Christ. That's where life begins. In Christ. I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus came for. He came to offer life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He, he came to offer himself. He came to offer life. Not a curse to us. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege for this sermon series. Thank you, God, for instructing us on how to go through life. So some of us have had some things happen in our life, God, that just scarred us for life. And sometimes, Heavenly Father, we make other people pay for it. Oh, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the things we've had to go through in life because those things made us strong. They taught me, they taught us how to pray. They taught us how to accept other people in life. And they taught me how to treat other people in life. I thank you, God, for saving me. Lord, we reciprocate that to you by telling you thank you. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for keeping our mind in perfect peace. Thank you for the, the one barn that we do have. It might be half full, but thank you for the one barn, Lord, or we thank you for the full barn. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for one freezer. We thank you for two freezers. We thank you. That's the law. You want to hear our thanksgiving. Teach us, Heavenly Father, to be a blessing to other people, to not just hoard everything so, so that we can say we have. We don't want to die and leave a house full and a bank account full and closets full and garages full for people who are going to uh, follow behind us. And Lord, we don't know how in the world they're going to treat it when they get it. But teach us how to be rich in God. And even one way we can be rich in him, and that is to study to show ourselves approved. On a workman, they need not be ashamed, but write it about the word of truth. Teach us your statutes. Teach us your ways. Make us strong. So when death does come, and it is coming, it's appointed once for man to die, and then the judgment. So it is coming. So, but when, teach us so when death come, we can gather our children around the bed. Instead of begging for mercy for them, and, and, and we could say, the Lord has given, and he's getting ready to take away. I love you all, and I trust you were trusting the God that I've been trusting in. And I'm getting ready to leave this place. I'm going to leave you behind. And where I'm going, you too also can go. But you got to live right for God. Lord, pray for this communion. If we partake in this communion cup, in Jesus' name, amen. Let us prepare. I know time's of the essence, but Hallelujah. let us prepare for our communion at this time. You should Hallelujah. have a communion cup. If you do not have a communion cup, if you would just raise your hand, um, we'll make sure that you do get one. If you do not have a communion, amen. There's, some, um, Deacon, there's somebody to my, my left, amen, and someone up front as well who do not have communion cups, uh, up here, um, Sister Judy uh, Whitsitt. Um. Amen. Amen. 
when Jesus was with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which has been broken for you. Take and eat. And likewise, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us stand. On your way out, you can drop your cups um, in there's a trash can outside the vestibule. Let us be mindful of those persons on our uh, sick and shut in, our healing and recovery list. I left off our prayer list, Sister Audrey Hewitt, who eulogized her brother the other day. I'm going to pray for our church families, you, you, and you. Pray for me as I continue to pray for you. The word says that when Jesus was with his disciples, he promised them he would no longer drink from this fruit of the vine anymore until the day comes when he would drink it for the first time in his father's kingdom. And the word says that they sang to him and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. We are dismissed from this place. Amen. We are dismissed. Have a safe week. Enjoy your Labor Day. Please be safe. And please follow the directions of our of our Thank you for watching the St. James Baptist Church broadcast. We pray that the Lord has blessed you and that powerful word that was preached on this morning. Continue to support us. Continue to watch our broadcast every Sunday at 9 o'clock. If you would like to come worship with us, please call the church during the week and let us know that you're coming so that we can put your name on the list and have you to worship with us on Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and have a wonderful summer. God bless you.